Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? Can y'all hear me clearly? Yo, yo. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Man, there's a lot of you here already. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> yep, I'm finally starting on time, guys. What's up? Right on time. What's up, everyone? Appreciate you guys being here. What a crazy week slash weekend, right? I mean, you guys saw the title <laughs> of the stream. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about, dude. A lot. More so than than uh, before. Wow, we just the, the viewer count just doubled. That, that's crazy. It's so crazy that... I'm talking to like over a hundred of you. That's 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 just blows my mind. But anyway, <laughs> um, what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? How's everybody enjoying WrestleMania week? <laughs> my favorite, my favorite uh, promotion, WWE, is having their uh, their biggest uh, week ever. Well, I guess we should start with that, right? W it's WrestleMania week. Uh, WWE have been doing media. All week long and for whatever reason they just can't st stop talking about AEW bro I'm sure you guys all know right I'm sure you guys all know the shots they've been taking at AEW throughout this whole week it started with the punk interview on Monday and it's so funny because we're gonna get into that we're gonna get into the punk in well no not not the punk. we already talked about that on on Wednesday stream um, we're gonna talk about what what the the domino effect of that punk interview um pat mcafee triple h all taking shots at wwe triple h just seems extremely extremely salty that he missed out on will osprey uh saying that um wrestlers who take the the easier schedule with more money are are essentially running from the grind like what bro you are literally going out there and saying, like, come over here where we'll pay you less and you have to work harder. Like, what? What are you talking about, bro? How is... And you know what's so funny? Like, 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 uh, why would you even say that if you, ha if you have hopes of signing Osprey when his first contract with AEW runs out? Why would you even go out there and say that? Where he said, I'm so happy we didn't choose you. Bro, they didn't choose you. What do you mean you didn't choose them? <laughs> like it's it's been a uh, they've been taking shots at uh at AEW all week uh Pat McAfee uh taking a shot at at AEW um attendance and stuff um it's just it's been really really cringe worthy considering it's WrestleMania week like bro when it's when it's all in week I don't want to hear people talking about WWE like when when it this coming this August when it's all in week at Wembley Stadium, I do not want to hear about WWE. I don't want to hear AEW people talk about WWE. I want to hear these people's thoughts on on the feuds that they're currently having and stuff like that. Like, um, it's just, but it's 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 okay when WWE takes shots. It's okay because because they're my favorite company. But when the AEW does it, oh no, why are they doing this? Hold on, what mission am I doing? Okay. <laughs> But yeah, man, like Triple H is is a is a big dummy for for coming out here and, and saying that like like way to way to freaking lose out on Osprey forever by by taking shots at him. And then CM Punk um also taking a shot at Osprey for whatever reason by um asking the Miz of all people who he was who Punk was feuding with years ago like not even feuding with who you just hated years ago this whole thing's a mess to even try to explain we all know we all know this the backstories right but for punk to to go out there and make a joke to the miz or oh, you're gonna get a a tattoo of, of the attendance which is obviously a shot at osprey for getting a tattoo of the all-in attendance from last year the whole thing is 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 like completely 
elementary petty and this is coming from the guy who said he doesn't like drama cm punk like come on come on bro you really don't like drama because you're the one out here <laughs> starting it everywhere and this is coming from one of his biggest stands me <laughs> i'm a hardcore cm punk well i wouldn't even call myself a stan i'm just you know i I'm, i've been a fan of his work up until now he's just uh he's he's being he's being a a, the, the biggest hypocrite you can you can imagine and some people are like oh it's okay that's just punk oh oz is here man with worst tattoos ever makes tattoo <laughs> i jibe i i i assume you mean jab or but yeah punk has horrible tattoos <laughs> but thank you for the super chat man uh, Axel, another super chat says, Trank, in your opinion, what would be the best outcome story wise for showing the video? We'll get into that right now. Uh, but thank you, man. Um, I'm going to make sure I specifically answer your question when, when I get into, uh, the, what I'm calling the forbidden footage. But, um, yeah, right now we're just getting into, um, WrestleMania week. Um, and how, how Tony Khan basically, they, they, they've been pushing AEW's buttons and it didn't just start. Let's let's be real. It didn't just start this week. Like, um, like there has actively for the past like two years, there's been nothing but, but like the media basically realized what gets them clicks, and what gets them clicks is anti AEW stuff. So for the past two years, that's all we've seen, bro. That's all we've seen. We've seen all oh, that, you know, they should have handled uh, the punk thing better. And while I and I even agree with that. But at a point, punk also has to take uh, responsibility. Like, I, I do think that Tony Khan could have done a better job. But at this point, in other words, they've they've uh, they've 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 pushed him to this. <laughs> they put they have created <laughs> Uh, I'm going to I'm going to get real edgy here. They have created um, the choker. <laughs> that oh that was really that was cringe. That was that was horrible. But uh I I I made that joke knowing it was going to be cringe, don't worry guys. But uh no, in all serious in all seriousness, like uh AEW has been the punching bag of the media for the past 2 years and the fact that they have uh something to at least you know, they have something to back them up here with with uh with the all in footage i do not blame tony khan one bit for saying you know what f it we're just gonna release the footage we're gonna we're gonna and we're gonna put it on on our our television show like it's all led to this so so yeah on on collision last night it was announced mind you right after wrestlemania when there's still another night of wrestlemania left too so this was clearly calculated in in uh, like uh in more ways than one. Sorry, let me get to uh, super chats. Oz says punk abuses coworkers instead of substances. I mean, hard to disagree with that, right? Thanks for the super chat, Oz. Another one from Oz says watched seven or eight Fed mi minutes yesterday for the first time since two thousand one. Can't believe how boring. Uh, poop emoji. It is. <laughs> I hope I'm saying this right. Hisokaro? Finally catching a live stream live. LOL. And Mania for real stinks. Not gonna lie. Thanks for the super chat, man. I hope I said your, your name right, but I appreciate the love and I appreciate your guys' um, input and stuff. Oh, man, we have a lot of viewers. That's crazy. I'm, I'm getting um getting anxiety here. <laughs> Usually, we, we have half of of <laughs> half of the viewers that, that we have right now. But uh, anyway, guys. So, yeah, it's all led to this. It was announced on Collision. That on Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday, AEW is going to release the all-in backstage footage. Um, that's all they said. That's all they said, right? The Young Bucks, actually. It, it was promoted as the Young Bucks will show the all-in backstage footage for the first time. And that's all they said. CM Punk was not mentioned by name. Uh, neither was Jack Perry. But, of course, we all, we all knew what this meant right like 
automatically i think all of our minds went oh they're talking about cm punk and and jack perry but then but then you start to think oh it's just the young bucks trolling they're not really gonna gonna show the footage that was my i'm sure we all thought that right like at, at some point because that was my that's what i thought i was like no it's the young bucks they're gonna do like a skit they're gonna have a um what's his name um griff garrison play <laughs> uh jungle boy in a skit and they're gonna like if anything reenact the uh the the backstage fight between uh jack perry and cm punk but then everyone in wrestling um media comes out and says no they are legit showing the footage of cm punk and jack perry and i'm like bro there's no way i'm like there is no way but apparently there is that's what they're doing that's what they're doing and like i said can you even uh blame aw and tony khan at this point now probably the only thing i would have done differently is i would have just uh like uh quote unquote leaked it to tmz or something um instead of putting it on my television show like personally but like i can see why tony khan is 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 choosing to do this obviously he's trying to get ratings um but yeah like uh, but also it's going to show it to your entire fan base right like because your your fan base watches the show so um so the the thought process behind this is there has to be something in there that makes punk look bad and that's the reason uh that they're releasing this Oz uh, says also gunther's the most overrated chop merchant ever what's his gimmick big fastest world war ii final boss from indiana jones i disagree with that oz i i disagree with that very very much he like not he is not nowhere close to overrated i wasn't talking about his his um him saving wrestlemania rashid brown says drew mcintyre is going to cut an all-time <laughs> an all-time promo on cm punk once that all-in footage drops dude for real that's for sure that's for sure man but yeah like look so the 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 common theory is that cm punk is lying about what happened backstage at at all in he claims that he uh choked jack perry just a little bit that's literally his own words literally his own words um from the ariel hawani interview um what's it called um so i don't know if you guys i'm sure some of you have already heard um someone who's close to jack perry and who used to work at aw i think she was the uh the makeup artist like in in the first two years of aw i don't think she works with them anymore but she's like close friends with jack um when when cm punk did the interview with with ariel earlier this week um he 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 claimed that he choked jack perry right a little bit um and and uh this lady she immediately uh tweeted out that the funny thing is that cm punk uh apparently tried to do an mma chokehold but he did it he applied it so bad that um jack perry was able to get out of it <laughs> and, and um and um i think apply a, a hold of his own or something like that so and then she immediately deleted the tweet though so if that actually happened if they have that on footage bro then i can i can see why they're choosing to release the footage i mean we don't know if that's true or not we're, we're gonna have to watch on wednesday and find out but I don't know. I think the fact that this is all even happening is is absolutely insane. We are literally seeing, um, this is like the wrestling equivalent of um, of Nas and Jay Z. <laughs> um, like people wanted the 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 Monday Night Wars back. I mean, this I guess as as close as we're gonna get to it. Like, I mean, like I'm I'm like I'm I'm not even the problem with with me with WWE taking shots at AEW. It's not even the fact that they're taking shots. It's the fact that they're doing it on WrestleMania week. Like, why are you, like, talking about your supposed not competitor during your big, the biggest week of, of the year? During your biggest week of the year? Like, 
like bro like like you guys are you guys are weird bro like take those take those shots on like on raw or something but they're doing it on wrestlemania week i don't know to me it's just kind of it's a bit hypocritical if you ask me Oz says, CM Punk lying, no way, he's a man of the highest integrity that would never flush his ethics down the drain to make money for, yeah, the traffickers. Yep, WWE is 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 horrendous, and he, he just went crawling back to them, dude. Oh, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But yeah, man, like it's just, it's, it's really, it's, it's insane to me that we're, <laughs> this is actually going to happen. I, I'm, I'm almost like at a loss for words. I, I like, I just, I can't believe that this, that, that this is going to happen. I, I really can't put it in, in any other words. And people are already complaining that this comes off as, as desperate and, and WCW like, and I mean, you're free to think that I'm not going to, I'm not here going to be to, to tell you you're wrong or, or that to convince you otherwise you're free to think that i'm uh i'm of the belief that it it, it does kind of um it kind of is a risk because like i don't know like because if, if you're doing this to reintroduce jack perry onto tv then i think it's gonna benefit him in the long run i think that's the biggest thing here like uh if, if you're doing this to, for the benefit of of one of your wrestlers who's who you know you're planning on keeping for the long run then I think it's it's kind of gonna be worth it, but I can't lie that that uh that yeah it is it does seem like a huge risk, man. Cause I don't know if if um. Cause if Jack Perry doesn't come off <laughs> great on this footage, then then you know to what in what way is it gonna benefit AEW? So I'm just trying to be nuanced here. I don't I don't think I don't want to be one extreme or the other. I can see why I can see the benefits of it, but I can also see it um, backfiring. It, it, it does have potential to backfire. But um, the fact so the fact that it's the young bucks, though, who are going to, you know, in in kayfabe within the, you know, within the. The storytelling of the of the of the AEW um universe for lack of a better term the young bucks are the ones who are gonna unearth this footage which to me it just makes me all the more curious to see how how they like how are they even gonna lay out this segment like something as little as that like how is it gonna be how is it gonna be presented oh man how is it gonna be presented how are they gonna you know like are they gonna do play by play on the whole thing what are they gonna do that's uh that's my biggest interest like i'm just so curious man like about this whole thing like are are they gonna blur out cm punk's face but it's gonna be obvious that it's him you know like just little things like that that's what i'm that's what i'm wondering um because i wouldn't be surprised if they do that like if they if they blur punk's face and then but it's like super obvious of course who it is and <laughs> Um, what are the young bucks gonna like actually say throughout all of it um and how are they gonna you know bring jack perry back into the fold because of it too um there's just a lot man there's a lot you can you can do with it and i don't know it just has me morbidly curious that's the only way i can describe it man morbidly curious But I do agree that Drew McIntyre is going to benefit from this, like, super, super, like, immensely. 300-plus <laughs> people hit that like button, folks, says Oz. Thanks, man. You're, you're promoting the stream better than I am, so I appreciate that. Appreciate all your uh, super chats. And uh, Oz also says, no way they'd release it unless it shames Phil 100%. That's what I think, too, right? Like, there's no way. There's no way they would release it. The fact And the fact that Tony Khan um hung on to the footage for so long like he wasn't um initially gonna gonna release it you know up until now after that interview and after all the all the um crap that uh man i missed the cage after all the crap that uh wwe has been talking during wrestlemania week 
like i i can see why he he finally decided to say all right like let you want to play dirty let's play dirty that's basically what he said drew says would you make a punk video about being a fan of his but also calling out all his bs i deeply dislike him but enjoyed montecillo's 2023 review vid um i don't know man i don't know if it would uh if it would be worth my time and i say that i'm not even trying to come off like uh like um condescending or anything but yeah if i just i don't want to make like a whole you know like because ma- even just making a, a small 10 minute video takes up takes up so much of my time i don't know how other people can put can consistently put out like 30 minute videos man like props to to uh content creators who can do that but for me man um um i don't mind just doing it here on streams you know i feel like i'm more human in these things i get to actually interact with you guys here so i guess for now i'll just do it here on streams because yeah like um my video essays i don't even know how i would get to uh to writing a, a, a punk video like that in the first place but yeah i don't know i've i've really really uh there we go man I've really soured on on punk in the past, uh, just the past two weeks alone, bro. Like, <laughs> like it's it's absolutely crazy. Um, it's the same thing that he did when he left WWE. Like, this guy just you know he does this he does this all the time. Like, and after a while, you know, it's it becomes a pattern and and. And he needs to start taking uh, accountability, bro. Like, it's never him. It's always something else, you know. Now, I'll always, like, love the the work that he did. Um, As a wrestler, he will still be one of my favorites. But, like, as a, I don't know, as a a human, he's he's not not really (laughs) helping his own case. In my opinion, in my opinion, you guys can completely disagree, and that's fine. With that being said, <laughs> Wednesday is gonna be crazy. Um, you guys don't want to miss that that stream if you want to um, get my reaction. It's gonna be insane. <laughs> it's gonna be insane for sure. I just I don't I don't even know what to expect. But this is AEW finally saying you know like. Enough is enough, man. And with that being said, I hope Cody finishes the story. (laughs) Because the way that Cody just has been talking about AEW when he's asked. And not just that. He's just, he, this guy is just beloved by, by everyone and everywhere he goes. Punk and Dwayne can both get effed, but McAfee clears. Oh, Oz, no. I, well, no, I, so I, <laughs> I, um, I don't like Pat McAfee. He's, he's absolutely horrendous, bro. I watched WrestleMania yesterday and man, it was, it was horrible. Um, and I, 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 uh, I like The Rock. The Rock basically saved this WrestleMania build, this build. I was going to say bold. <laughs> he saved this WrestleMania build. But yeah, no, I so so yeah, guys, I guess we should talk about uh WrestleMania. I watched WrestleMania night 1. Um and if you can if you can imagine, uh I didn't like it <laughs> to the surprise of no one, right? Um the only thing I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed from beginning to end that I thought was really good was Sammy versus Gunther for the Intercontinental title. This was a wrestling match on a show that's about moments. This was a wrestling match on a show that's not about wrestling, in other words. <laughs> and I thought they did really, really good. Um, I wouldn't put it on my... Uh, uh, 
I don't think it's a match of the year contender because I think had this match happened in any other company, and I really do mean any other company. I don't I don't mean just AEW. I mean like New Japan, heck, even uh even TNA. I really think that these two guys would have hit another gear, but uh but even then with it being just a uh in WWE, they, I think they still you know made the most of of the time they were given and i really enjoyed it man i think uh i mean how can how can anyone hate sammy zane bro like he's a uh, if 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 you watched him in in um ring of honor and 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 everywhere else bro is a legend he's part of that era of of you know indie the golden age of indie wrestling essentially i just don't see how anyone can can dislike him and then Gunther, Walter, <laughs> for for that one person in the chat who says they they always uh they love when I call Gunther Walter, um, bro, nah, he's he's WWE's best in ring wrestler, but by far, I I don't care what anyone says. Sorry, Oz, I gotta disagree with you here, bro. Gunther's a beast, and I would love if he was in AEW, bro, or like New Japan or something. Like this guy's unreal. Like, I, I was I was just imagining, like, imagine Gunther versus Takeshita versus Okada versus Osprey versus Omega. Who else versus Hangman? Like, bro, I really wish, I really wish that, uh, that this is the one guy that I want, that I wish AEW had on, on the WWE roster, like. He's the he's the one guy. So I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the story too. It was it was very um it was very, you know, just it was a classic underdog match for, for Sami Zayn. No! <laughs> Which uh he excels at. Gunther versus Danielson, how did I uh leave that out? That one too. Smooth. What's up, man? For those who are new here, because there's like over, there's 300, over 300 of you here. Smooth is the biggest WWE fan. He'll answer all your WWE questions. So ask him. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, yeah, man. No, I, I love that match. It, it was, it was, a uh, it was genuinely, it's probably the best WWE match you'll see all year, honestly, like. I don't. I don't really see how how anyone will top this, but yeah, I, I wish. Uh, I wish AEW had Gunther, bro. Like that's that's all I can really say. Like, I'm pretty. Uh, like AEW already has an embar embarrassment of riches, but even then, I'm pretty. I'm pretty jealous that the Fed has uh, Walter. Can't lie. Drew says super card. Better than WrestleMania 40 women's matches and main event, Rock. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I agree, man. I really enjoyed SuperCard. Ex um, outside of one match, I thought SuperCard was really, really good. Like ROH, man. ROH pay per views they just don't miss. And um, I hope to talk about all the matches on that show, but um, in this stream. But uh, when it comes to WrestleMania, man. So okay, I, I guess I'll give you my thoughts on on all the matches from WrestleMania Night One. Rhea versus Becky, I thought was was good. Nothing, it wasn't it wasn't great or or bad, just good. Um, I really do think that people tend to say that Becky is the best of the four horsewomen. I don't see it. I've never I've never really seen it personally, but uh, I've always thought that was Mercedes, and I'm not just saying that because she's with AEW now. I genuinely have thought that um, the whole time. But, um, and she's also lost a step too, Becky, in my opinion, but it was, I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like, just, you know, crap on, on this match. Cause like I said, it was, I thought it was good. It wasn't, it wasn't great or, or bad. I thought it was a good opener. Um, but, but yeah, obviously I don't watch the weekly shows. So I really, <laughs> I, I, maybe I lose a lot of context when watching, when watching these matches. Well, not maybe I a hundred percent do, but, um. It was a, it was a decent opener, but after that it was the, the tag team ladder match, which, 
was kind of like sloppy up until you know a certain point um i thought it was it was uh interesting that they split up the belts like i was like oh i thought i thought one team had to win both belts but um i was rooting for the new day i think the new day are great i think the new day should get the praise that uh the usos get i just think new day are better than the usos bro like everybody wwe fans call usos one of the greatest tag teams of all time and i just personally don't see it i think new day has has uh has proven that much more but i guess i guess i'm 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 wrong right i'm wrong <laughs> I don't understand the WWE cinema. Um, I'm I'm just forgetting the the uh, the match order. Uh, Lenny says the NXT North American title match is the best of the weekend. I did not watch Stand and Deliver. Axel says comment on Brandy Rhodes comments. Which ones? The ones about AEW. Not. Um straying away from the original vision i think that's funny that of all people she's saying that because the original AEW featured the nightmare collective and while i think AEW in 2019 was good for the most part um i think it was better in 2020 and 2021 and even the start of this year i think it was better and and it was it got a lot better when she was not on TV. I just I hate to be mean, but those words would hold a lot more weight if they came from Cody than Brandy. I'm sorry, but maybe she's speaking for Cody, so who knows? But until yeah, I don't know. I just I just feel that she got mad. I don't want to be mean, but I I just feel like she got mad that uh. The rumor is that Tony Khan didn't want to re-sign her, but but he did want to re-sign Cody. And I always think that that was the personal issue that Cody refuses to say, but I don't know. But yeah, I didn't watch I didn't watch uh Stan and Deliver. Yo, why are why are DIY doing DX cosplay? I thought I was kind of cringe, bro. They're grown men. Like I, I don't, I don't have a problem with um homage. I don't have a problem with that. But literally, like cosplaying them with the entrance and and like the the way they're moving too. I was like, bro, that's kind of that's kind of weird. Or was I the only one? Am I just being too too harsh? Cause yeah, I was gonna say that about about the ladder match, but oh man, anyone who ever says anything is the worst in AW today clearly didn't have to live through the Nightmare Collective. AW's actual worst thing ever says Drew. The, I 100% agree. The Nightmare Collective. Mm, well, since then we've had things that might rival it, but the Nightmare Collective was just. A hundred percent horrible. When I say horrible, I mean horrible. I feel like she, I don't know, Brandy just, I don't think she ever really understood what, what AEW fans wanted. And to an extent, Cody, by the end of Cody's AEW run, he didn't, he didn't really know what, what, uh, what AEW fans wanted out of him, which was for him to turn heel, and it would have been beautiful. And he, I know he claims he he was a heel by not turning heel, but that's that's dumb, bro. Yeah, so DIY, I don't know. I thought that was whole. I thought that whole thing was cringe. 
But anyway, the ladder match was was like it picked up by the end. I thought it was okay. Um, I think uh, our truth getting his WrestleMania moment. I don't think um, I have any right to be uh, complaining about that because by all by all accounts, um, our truth is is great. Um, or like a nice person at least. <laughs> so yeah, and uh. I remember well, when I used to watch WWE, he used to make me laugh. So I have I have no problem with R Truth getting his WrestleMania moment. Um, the only the only sad part is that the Miz is his tag team partner. Ah oh, man, just missed it. So yeah, Jermaine, thanks for the uh, super chat. You don't have a question or anything? You can send one just in the regular chat, and I'll I'll try to get to it. But uh. Yeah, man. Um, we had the the um, the lucha libre match <laughs> with um, Andrade and Ray versus Santos and Joaquin Wild, right? I know him as DJ Z from um, his time in TNA, but um, I thought this was good. I, I um, dude, the way Ray moves at his age just blows my mind like it's it's absolutely incredible and um i still blame dominic for us not getting <laughs> ray in aew um or even ray in new japan we we're supposed to get ray in new japan at the very least man we were robbed by by ray's son <laughs> but um i thought his match was was okay for what it was i don't think it was a uh, match of the year contender or anything but um well, no, just okay. I thought it was good. It was like the opening match. It didn't blow me away, but it wasn't um. It was a mid or 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 even bad, of course. Andrade um, getting a last minute WrestleMania match, I think is is super funny. Well, he was originally gonna be left off the show. I bet he feels um. I bet he feels vindicated now, but even then, like the fact that he had to be added last minute um. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they do with Andrade. There's not many uh, NXT black and gold merchants left for uh, Triple H to uh, to bring back. I think Malachi and Buddy are some of the last ones left. Man, how do I do this one? But uh. <laughs> nice crowd here please announce streams on social says oz um are you talking to me oz thanks for the super chat though but um no nah, i don't i don't like to promote these streams i kind of like them to be a little underground i'm not gonna lie is that is that selfish of me <laughs> i like i like doing these and just um you know having them be a little a tight-knit community but i appreciate it though um i gotta pull up the wrestlemania match list because i don't remember the the match list sorry hold on so i can keep giving guys my thoughts so that lucha match was was good um so <laughs> i'm not even gonna lie i did not watch jimmy versus jay Uso. i had zero interest in watching that i knew it was gonna be bad these guys stink bro i don't like the usos never have never will they i just don't like their their ring style i think it's and I think uh, their I think their fan base in particular are super hypocritical because they they um, crap on the young bucks, but the Usos spam super kicks way more than the young bucks. Someone counted the amount of super kicks thrown in this match. I think it was like sixteen, um, and I was like, oh, so they had an off night. <laughs> but um, I didn't watch this, so I I knew it was gonna be bad, um, <laughs> and. Uh, and I heard it was it was atrocious, so <laughs> I felt vindicated in that. I can't give you my opinion on this because I didn't see it, but I knew uh, all I can say is I knew it was going to be bad, and apparently it was it was really bad. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry to anyone who had to watch that match, but uh, I did see the next match like immediately as it as it started um, when they made their entrances. It was Naomi, uh, Bianca Belair, and Jade Cargill versus Damage Control. And uh, I thought this was a, a fun match. I, I don't think it was uh, 
like too crazy or anything oh man almost but uh sorry guys i for you guys probably forget that i'm i'm playing while i do these <laughs> while i review wrestling but um i thought this was good i mean a lot of people are gonna be like oh jade hasn't <laughs> hasn't uh changed much and i guess that's fair considering how long has she, has she been off tv since she signed i guess that's a fair assessment um i just don't want to come off like a like a bitter aw fan who who you know is mad that that jade signed with with wwe because genuinely i'm not i'm not i'm not bothered by that but um and i do wish jade the best at wwe but i i did see a lot of people already saying man like uh what were wwe doing you know with with jade for so long why did they keep her off tv for so long but um yeah like austin says here thanks for a super chat man he says them boys better hope night two better than night one dude for real <laughs> like they 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 need a hail mary at this point um but yeah this match um so i've i've i, I wanted to say I've always been a, a fan of Bianca Belair ever, ever since her NXT days. I've always thought she, in NXT, I thought she was super underrated, and that Triple H was was dumb for never putting the NXT World Title on her. Um, so yeah, like I, and of course I'm a fan of Trinity. Um, I just wish that uh, that that yeah, like I don't know. I was kind of yeah, like disappointed that she just walked right back into the Fed, but it is what it is, like. It's a business at the end of the day. But, um, and of course, obviously, I'm a fan of Jade from her time in AEW. Um, but uh, I thought, yeah, it was a fun match. Nothing too crazy, but it was, it was fun. But like I said, I know people are going to be asking about uh, Jade. There we go. I finally got this. And, um, like, why was she off TV for long if she looked the exact same as she did in, in AEW? And I think that's a fair question to ask. I just don't want to be... I don't want to hate on Jade because I don't want to seem like those WWE fans who turned on Danielson, on Edge, on Moxley, on, on all those guys when they left WWE. Lenny says, Cody is the biggest babyface in wrestling. And do you think Adam Cole ever returns back to WWE under Triple H? Don't think he would have left. Um, Never say never, obviously. Uh, but, uh, I think he's happy working with, with his girlfriend, Britt Baker. I think that's super important to them. And yeah, who knows? Like I said, never say never though. I anything's possible. You can't count anything out these days, guys. Like, like you'd be, you'd be a fool to, to do so. But, um, yeah. So thanks for the super chat, by the way lady so after the uh the trios women's match we did get the big one Sami Zayn versus gunther probably the only the only good i would say pro wrestling match not probably i'll say it i'll say it with my chest <laughs> the only good wrestling match on on wrestlemania so far Man, I, I, I talked about it already. I thought it was a, a good story told. And I think they they put on a, a strong performance. The brain buster off uh, to the top turnbuckle. Um, it is a move that uh, Sammy has not hit in a very long time, right? And it's a move that we've actually seen in AEW a lot recently. Um which makes it all the more interesting. He probably got mad that people were using um, one of his moves, and he's like, "Let, let me do it." But um, yeah, I thought I thought this was great, and uh, like I said, ah man, bring Walter to AEW. This guy's a monster, bro. His reign ended at what was it? Six hundred and sixty-six days. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> but uh. Yeah, like, uh, this was just, uh, I, I, I had high expectations for it, and, and by WWE standards, I think they met them, and, and yeah, man, like, 
Sami Zayn being the one to end the reign of Gunther is is pretty cool. I'm glad that he has two big uh, WrestleMania moments now. And yeah, he deserves that. Especially after they fed him to Roman Reigns uh, last year. After he carried the Bloodline storyline. Sami Zayn. This is like the least they can do for him. Um, and then... Gunther. Who knows what they're going to do with him, man. If he's going to be Cody's first feud and they just feed him to Cody, that's a mistake in my opinion. But they need to do something with him. Because the way he's... Oh, man. The way he's so much better... Then everyone on the WWE roster is crazy to me. <laughs> Justice for everything useless. Also, let's talk Ring of Honor. I'll get to Ring of Honor very, very shortly. But thanks, man. Thanks for the super chat. Oz says Jade makes Hulk Hogan's moveset look like Osprey. Dang you, dang Oz, you're the, Oz. I don't get you because you we agree on some stuff, but but uh, you're. You're a big supporter of the channel, so that's 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 the that's the best part. <laughs> but no, but uh, yeah, man, you don't like Daniel Garcia. You apparently don't like uh Gunther, which is crazy to me, bro. Um, or or Willow Nightingale, like what, bro? <laughs> ah, man, I thought I could get there, but uh. Yeah, so that match was obviously the best match on WrestleMania. Nothing came close. Uh, I don't know what else to add to that. We got to talk about the main event, though. The Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth. Man, The Rock saved the storyline. He came in. He had the best entrance, best aura. And then the bell rang. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I was here because of The Rock. Bro, The Rock deserved for me to tune in, bro. I had seen the work he was putting in. I wanted to tune in because The Rock carried this build single-handedly. And then the bell rang. This was bad for like 90% of the match. I don't care what anyone says. This was not cinema. I'll, I'll give them credit. The ending was good, but only the ending. Like, they should have they should have cut this by like 15 minutes. Damn. I, th I saw that it was like what 40 44 minutes long the wh like the whole match I can't I can't believe it was that long no I can't believe it. I thought it was longer it felt like two hours the the rock was obviously you know they were they were trying to protect him with his uh he hasn't wrestled in in 11 years so obviously they wanted to protect him um he was uh, limited, but at least he, he, I would say he put in the work. He tried to make it work. And to be fair to him, he had some great moments in this. Um, I think Cody and The Rock and Roman uh, had great spots in this. Seth, absolutely freaking useless in this match. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not sorry at all to say that. I thought Seth brought nothing to this. I mean, he was the punching bag for the three bigger stars, but that's it. Um, Cody was getting booed at points in the match. I found that interesting. I don't think that'll happen today, though. I just think that being in the ring with uh, with The Rock does that to someone. Like I said, I think he'll be um, pretty heavily cheered today, and I hope he wins. I'm not gonna watch night two, by the way, but um, I hope he I hope he wins. Um, and then. Um, Roman, I thought Roman did okay. I don't want to just, uh, like, come out here and say he did he did terrible. I mean, I really do think, but like, yeah, let's be honest, guys. This this match was, this was this was uh, I I think it's crazy how someone can watch this and say it was you know cinema or one of the best matches they've ever seen. It's, I and I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying we have different tastes, like. But um, I'm glad that we have at least options now in wrestling, man. Because this reminded me of why I don't really watch WWE anymore. 
Drew says, have we talked about WrestleMania 40 crowd yet? I know it was cold, but a lot of matches screamed or seemed dead. And you could tell when they were actually invested. Dude, yeah, Drew, thank you for the reminder. Um, what's it called? Um, the crowd, <laughs> the crowd st stunk. That's the best way I can put it. And yeah, people are saying, oh, it's because it was it was cold. Um, wear a sweater <laughs> like that. Like what? Like did how how did you not know leaving your hotel or leaving your house? You know, I'm talking to the crowd. Um, how did you not know when you stepped out that it wasn't gonna be cold? Like um, you know, like like especially to a WrestleMania in outdoor event. You know what I mean? Like the the stadium is is open air. Um, I don't I don't. I think that's a weak excuse, especially considering that, you know, Eagles fans go week in, week out and, and make noise. And I just think, yeah, it's it's a it's a cop out. But the crowd, yeah, the crowd uh, stunk for the majority of it. The ironic thing is that for the only pro wrestling match on this show, the crowd was pretty lively. And I'm talking about Gunther versus Sammy, which uh, proves uh, Brian Danielson's quote where he said, if you show if you show people great pro wrestling they will love it boots oh man <laughs> thank you for the generous super chat man i don't even know how to thank you for that appreciate it uh boots says is aw5 forever worth 30 bucks also any thoughts on billy stark's injury angle to win her match um for 30 bucks i still think that's overpriced <laughs> i'm not going to lie i would I don't know if I could even recommend it to you for twenty, maybe twenty, but that's yeah, that's still pushing it. I'm I'm not kidding when I tell you that the game is is lacking in content, and also boots. Um, if you plan on playing online, I I just hear that you know like the 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 player base is just completely you know like there's not many people playing the game, in other words, either. But if you're if you're playing it just for just to play it on your own then i would say uh i would say 20 bucks i i can't in good faith recommend it to you for 30 i just think that's too much i don't want i don't want you to feel ripped off uh the gameplay itself is good but there's it's just so lacking in content and the fact that they're paywalling every piece of dlc is is uh it's just it's just dumb in my opinion and the game has been a disaster if you ask me I hate I hate to put it that way, but I don't want to I don't want to sugarcoat it, especially because you were, you were super generous with your uh, with your super chat too. So, um, I just uh, yeah that's that's my those are my thoughts. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it even at that price. I still think that's too much. But thank you, boots man. Can't thank you enough for that. <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, that WrestleMania main event, the ending. The ending was was cool. I think Roman spearing the Rock, and then the the way the Rock sold it, I thought that was that was the best part of the match to me. The Rock sold that so well. But the Rock did pin Cody after a people's elbow, and uh, that means it's bloodline rules for Roman versus Cody tonight, which means that Cody's gonna overcome the odds and he's gonna finish the story. That's what's gonna happen. So, yeah. I'm happy for Cody. Shout out to Cody, bro. But um, let's talk about Supercard of Honor. I've been talking about Wrestle WrestleMania for so long. Kyle Fletcher and Big Shoddy Lee Johnson had probably, <laughs> to my surprise, what will go down as one of the best pay-per-view openers of the year. This match was insane, dude. Like, like I didn't like. Um, I apologize to uh, Shoddy Lee. Cause I was not familiar with his game. I knew Kyle Fletcher was good, but man, like, um, Lee Johnson just like showed out dude. And I thought this opening match for the ring of honor television title was, was really, really good. It was, um, I, I don't know. I don't know how else to praise it, man. It, like go out of your way to watch this. If you didn't, like it was, it was really good. And Kyle Fletcher, in my opinion, is a future AEW world champion. I know we say that a lot, but I genuinely mean it with him because this dude, he is literally unevolved Will Ospreay. And I say that as a compliment, like, because he's going to eventually evolve into Will Ospreay. 
And um, when I see him wrestle, it's like I'm watching, you know, when you were watching, I don't know if you guys can like relate, but if you were watching like um, young Will Ospreay or young Kenny Omega, like if you, if you, and you knew they were going to, you know, one day like be, be champions and, oh man. You knew one day that they would be special. Is what I'm saying with Kyle Fletcher. This guy has it all. He's tall. He has the look, um, and he's great in the ring. and And he can he can also talk. He's an underrated promo, if you ask me. Like I really do feel like he's the prototype AEW main eventer, and I I feel like Tony Khan sees it too, which is why he's you know gonna use him well in Ring of Honor. But yeah, shout out to also to lee johnson because he deserves a lot of credit for for this and for going to ring of honor and and using using ring of honor to to get better and to have matches like this so i hope that i i hope that he has continued success as well because kyle fletcher is going to be okay but i also hope that lee johnson has um lots of success as well we had the stardom showcase trios match and dude, this <laughs> stardom and AEW having a partnership is really gonna put it into perspective. Like you know how how they're how you know Joshi wrestling is miles and miles and miles in leagues ahead of women's wrestling here in America. Like if you'd never seen stardom before and this was your first time seeing like uh an all starter match then i would imagine your your mind was blown cuz the stuff that uh that these women do is like crazy and and it's also it's not just the stuff that they do it's you know that the pace they move at and and just it it's <laughs> it's frankly yeah people <laughs> this is going to make this is going to have to make people step up i'm just i'm trying to be <laughs> as nice as po possible here but Obviously, AEW has people who can hang, um, especially now. If this was 2019, oh man, this roster would be screwed. <laughs> if this was the 2019 AEW women's roster, <laughs> they'd be in big trouble. But now, now they have uh, they have Tony Storm, they have Jamie Hayter, they have Mercedes Monet. Um, even um, I'll get into it later. But someone like Queen Aminata can definitely hang with the Stardom roster. Um, I know I'm forgetting names. Uh, Chris Statlander. Um, Willow Nightingale, um, like I said, I'm 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 leaving out a lot of names, but the point is they have the roster now um, to make this partnership worthwhile, and and yeah, man, like I thought this Stardom Showcase, uh, it reminded me a lot of the just the the Joshi sh Showcase um, at the first ever Double or Nothing, and it was great. Everybody looked great. Um, Azumi was like uh ah sorry okay i forgot oh man <laughs> sorry guys um i thought azumi looked like a star um micah being there was was also a huge deal because she's like the their uh their top champion so so yeah man like i think everybody did did their part and it was really cool and then mariah may got involved at the end of course i think that's really interesting they're already um implementing stardom into uh into pretty important storylines, if you ask me, because I mean, Mariah May is directly involved with the with uh, the women's world champion Tony Storm, and uh, if you guys missed the Stardom show that happened um, over the weekend, um, Tony Storm showed up there too after Mariah May's match with uh, Mina Shirakawa, and that's probably uh, that might be the Forbidden Door match, right? Tony Storm and Mina, but uh. We'll see, man. I don't know. I'm hyped for Forbidden Door, especially because New Japan, <laughs> they weren't really going to be enough this year, like especially with a lot of the main events seeing jumping ship to AEW. Um, so adding CMLL and Stardom, I think, adds a whole different dimension. <laughs> Drew says, Fletcher in his war, war turtle <laughs> stage of evolution. Yeah, dude, for real. <laughs> But yeah, what's it called? 
I think this uh, this stardom partnership is is only gonna make uh, everybody else step their game up. Cause yeah, dude, like that, it's it's ridiculous how far ahead they are um, compared to uh, uh, women's wrestling in, in in the U.S. So th this got me really hyped for the future. It was a great. That's what it was like a great um, introduction to those who weren't aren't familiar. And a way to get excited for you know the future and and the possibilities. So, and then we had um, we had the Kingdom tag match, which didn't really move me against uh, the Infantry, right? Um, it, it was what it was. Wardlow helped them, and this gimmick is kind of the Undisputed Kingdom. You guys already know how I feel about it. And it's it's uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. I <laughs> can't can't even articulate it. Um, it's just not. It's not working without um Adam Cole being able to wrestle or MJF being gone. Hisso Carl says, speaking that Fed agent Rossi, it was funny seeing Edron's pretend to know who and who he and Julia was. Yeah, man, that's true. I didn't even mention that, right? Julia being ringside at um stand and deliver, and then um. <laughs> WWE fans, Fed Fed stands, <laughs> being like, WWE signed the best free agents. That you know, oh, they missed out on Mercedes and Osprey and and Okada, but Julia is definitely the be the better one out of those out of out of those four. Um, and look, they're they're setting up Julia so bad by saying that because Julia is is great. She's great talent. I wouldn't even put her in the top i don't know this might be controversial i don't think she's in the top 10 best women wrestlers in the world she might be in the top 20 but um that might be controversial though i don't know but she don't but but look the point is she's still a great talent though like but they're setting her up bad by saying oh wwe got the the best free agent like bro I think Will Osprey will be the best investment that um, AEW has ever made. Honestly, I mean, just look at how over he is, and you know. So, I don't know. They're they're in other words, they're they're like they're yeah they're they're setting her up badly by saying things like that. Like, and they don't even know her. Like that's that's the point that um <laughs> that uh, Carl is trying to make with this uh with this super chat yeah they don't even know her like they're, they're pretending to know i saw someone <laughs> literally used i saw a fed stand literally used a uh, chat gpt to to pretend that that he knew uh julia like he he basically just asked an ai to write stuff about her and he didn't even bother to read it before posting it because the post said um from what our sources gathered <laughs> like you know ai ai say that <laughs> it's just it's pretty it's pretty pathetic garcia gonna evolve into charizard aka danielson <laughs> for real oz and gloria says e-drones yes my mistake e-drones fed stands whatever whatever you want to call them but yeah and the point is they do not they do not know these people they do not know these people. Yeah, you see, some people are saying she's in the top five. I don't know. I've, I've, um, I don't know. I've personally never really. No, I've always thought. Well, it's because I, I stopped watching Stardom a long time ago. Like, I'm not gonna act like I, I, I watch it. Like, I have not watched it in a long time. So. Maybe she got better since the last time I, I and she was she was always good though. Like I'm saying, I'm not even saying I'm not saying she's she's bad. She's she's a great, great. Per Look, she's gonna walk in and be better than than um the the majority of, of wrestlers there, male or female. That that's that's you know that's how good she is. So I'm, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually trying to put over how how good she is, but also but also saying that, um. She is not the better signing <laughs> out of Osprey, Mercedes, and Okada. That's just, that's ridiculous. But then again, these uh, 
Fed stands would say this about Tamatanga too. They're gonna act like Tamatanga is uh freaking Okada. Just watch. Just you see. Uh, where were we? <laughs> yeah, the the undisputed kingdom match. It, it it's whatever. I don't even know what 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 to add to that. But um, after that was it? Hold on, I need to pull up the the card here. After that was it? Yes, Billy Starks versus Queen Aminata to crown the first ever. ROH Women's TV Champion. Dude. This match was incredible. The whole thing from 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 beginning to end. Loved it. Loved it. Um so I'm not going to lie, I see this match. I'm 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 blown away by it and then I'm thinking, why why are we not getting um women's matches of this quality on AEW pay-per-views? Like it's been a long time since we've had a a really good women's match on AEW pay-per-views. I feel like when Jamie Hader was champion, she was uh she was the one having, you know, like really really awesome matches. Um and Tony's capable of having great matches. It's just her for whatever reason, she's she's um letting the gimmick influence her in-ring work and I and I hate that. I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to pretend like like uh it's it doesn't bother me because, yeah, it's she's capable of having great matches, but her her gimmick, which is now kind of souring me on the gimmick because because of of uh, the way she's wrestling with it. Like at first, I really loved the gimmick, and now, um, but the the more it goes on, she's not having uh, uh, great matches. Like before, she was having great matches, she was just missing a, a gimmick. Like, like there has to be a way to balance the two, bro. It can't. It doesn't have to be all in on on one and and then you know, completely disregard the other. So yeah, this match was was really great. It was, and the fact that you, <laughs> it's insane to me that Queen Aminata essentially you know came out of nowhere because I know she I know she's been wrestling on indies for for a long time, but. When I say came out of nowhere, as in like she, she wasn't signed to like TNA or, or or anywhere like that. But the fact that she's as good as she is 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 it blows my mind. And of course, Billy Starks is only nineteen, and and she's already like you know, like at a at a level that is beyond her age, which is crazy. I can only imagine you know when she does actually start um, entering her prime, like how good you know the potential. If she just keeps improving at the rate that she is. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to catch this monkey. <laughs> oh, this is annoying me. Sorry, yeah. Okay, I'm going to put this down. Um, so, yeah, man. I thought this match was great. It was, it, like, they were, at one point, I was like, I'm watching a, a, a strong style type match. And it, I was like, man. And then at the end, with Billy Starks um, faking the the neck injury, I really thought, I really thought she was hurt. And I was like, oh man, she. I'm not gonna lie, I thought, I honestly expected the worst. I thought she, she uh, was like paralyzed or something. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of like um embarrassed to say it because now i got worked right but no that's the point of wrestling bro we're supposed to get worked we're supposed to be fooled that's the wrestlers jobs so i'm not uh i'm not afraid to say i was uh i was duped and um <laughs> it was a fantastic angle like i i know people are some people are gonna argue that it was in poor taste but i don't know it's wrestling wrestling is about making you believe and it's not like they crossed any like well no well that's up to opinion right but i was gonna say it's not like they crossed any like moral any moral um what's the word i'm looking for boundaries at least in my opinion i got worked i don't care it was a fantastic angle and billy starks using that to win was a, a incredible finish 
uh oz says d vaquer hater storm athena thunder etc yep that's a great group julia with rossi looked like a hostage <laughs> oz you're crazy bro but yeah man i thought this was a uh this might have been my my favorite match of the show maybe i it's either this or kyle fletcher and and uh lee johnson honestly but it was really well done really well done bullet club gold had an open challenge and it was answered by lance archer alex zane and minoru suzuki suzuki just shows up when he wants gets a loud pop and then leaves that's that's pretty dope if you ask me but anyway um this was a good match but of course the acclaimed came out afterwards and i was like why <laughs> just end this already bro i'm not kidding when i say jay white versus billy gunn was one of the worst dynamite matches ever worst AEW matches actually it was really bad they should have just unified the titles at this show and then and then ended it i can't believe we're still going on with this story like tony khan what are you doing bro Man. just stop it tony khan stop it we had <laughs> dalton castle versus johnny tv um this was horrendous and up until this match i was planning on making a video essay on this show because i was like man this is going to go down as one of the show of the year contenders but this was genuinely horrendous. I mean, you might have found it funny. I didn't find it funny. We just probably have different um, senses of humor. I'm not saying my opinion is right. I just didn't like it. I thought it was thought it was horrendous. But um, the fact that we got two matches like this from booked by Tony Khan, days within each other, um, it 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 made me a bit uh. <laughs> Made me a bit uh just what are what are we doing tony can, can we go back to uh to what we were doing when the year started please in the lead up to revolution but yeah that's all i have to say about that athena defeated uh hikaru shida in a, in a pretty good match uh um at this point i don't know who's gonna defeat athena like who can it even be like literally who can it be guys because i literally don't know who are you guys thinking that it might be? And while I'm while I'm there, hold on. Uh, Drew says Aminata acting sold me on the injury work. Yeah, that was a huge part of convincing me, because she genuinely looked like she wanted to to cry, and I was like, oh man, she really hurt her. <laughs> That's what I was seeing, and it, like it looked like she uh she just felt bad about the whole whole thing, but um. Yeah, apparently they it was it was all a work, man. Who's gonna dethrone Athena? Let's see, what's everybody saying? Ruby. I wouldn't mind Ruby Soho being the one. Camille. Is she still even going to AEW? Does anybody know? Has there been an update on that? Yuka. Athena already beat Yuka. I think at last year's Supercard, didn't she? Which makes that a bit, like, unlikely. I mean, it's not impossible. I just don't see why Tony Khan would have had her lose last year. Okay. Charlotte Flair. Mark Henry? You guys are fools. Soraya? Oh, no. Tranquilo Club will dethrone Athena? You guys are crazy. It will not be me. <laughs> that's for sure. Kenny Omega. Jamie. I don't think it'll be Jamie. I think Jamie needs to be in the, in the AEW world title picture. Riho. 
it could be Riho, but I don't know. Like just the uh, the fact that Riho is is always going back and forth between here and Japan, I think would make it difficult for her to be the champion. Willow again. I thought I really thought it was gonna be Willow, man. Um, it could be her. Nyla Rose has has Nyla um feuded with Athena. I don't know because I don't watch a uh, weekly ROH. They haven't had a pay per view match, have they? It should be Aminata. I I I agree actually with that. I think I think they could build her up enough to be the one to dethrone Athena. Deeb. Mariah May. I think Mariah May should stay on AEW. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, I remember. I remember seeing clips of it. I mean, because like I said, I don't watch ROH TV. Someone said Lady Frost, LOL. Lady Frost is pretty underrated. But, like, her role on the roster is like a... Well, at least on AEW TV, I don't I don't watch Ring of Honor, so I don't know. But um, she's a jobber to the stars, right? Uh, sorry. Well, yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know who's gonna dethrone Athena at this point. She's been champion forever, and it's obviously not gonna be like. Billy Starks either because she's now a ROH TV champ so I guess we'll see and then we add the main event man Mark Briscoe man up Mark Briscoe versus Eddie Kingston and it was cool for uh for for Mark Briscoe to come out with the uh with the old school man with the old school Briscoe's theme with uh, Tony Khan making making that investment, you know, um, and in the in the post show conference, you can tell how much that meant to Mark Briscoe. Like you see, guys, like Tony can be uh, a goof sometimes, but I think that's his like biggest uh, offense, just being like a a geek sometimes. But aren't we all? We're all wrestling fans. At least he's like. The fact that that's the worst thing about him is that he's a a geek sometimes who just um who just tweets too much like a troll compared to the actual evil people in wrestling like I'm just I'm just glad that that at least AEW is an option I'm not saying Tony Khan's a saint either, because some people, some AEW fans take it way too far, like the other end. Like I, I saw someone on social media calling Tony Khan adorable, and I was like, bro, that okay, that's too far, bro. Like, <laughs> like I get it, he gets a lot of unnecessary hate, but now nah, that that's a little too far. <laughs> like, stop. Kenny spotted in a WWE video package. LMAO for real for what? For Cody? Because that's the only thing I can think of. Okay, sorry guys, I was trying to read the chat. But yeah, um <laughs> thanks for the super chat by the way. Black Yakuzu 94. But uh yeah, man. Um by by the time Mark Briscoe versus Eddie Kingston happened, you can tell the crowd was a little tired, but I'm glad that by uh the end of it, um the crowd did did get back into it and they Mark Briscoe got a deserved ovation when he won the ROH World Title. Um I forgot how many years it was, but it was the exact date that um, his brother, uh, Jay Briscoe, also won the ROH title. So it was, it was really, really uh, a really beautiful moment that I think Mark, Bris Mark Briscoe deserved. And then the celebrations afterwards with his family and the locker room, 
It was just, it was super dope. And it's moments like this that make me love wrestling, man. Like, I'm like, this is why I, I love wrestling. And this is why I, I still put up with uh, weirdos who claim to love wrestling but only watch the most anti-wrestling company <laughs> there is. Yeah, Mark Briscoe get, winning the ROH World Title was really cool, and like I said, it, you can tell how much it meant to him in the in the post show conference, and I'm glad that he had he got that moment, especially in front of um. I honestly thought, guys, that uh, the crowd for for SuperCard um was a really really good crowd, um, you know, just like uh as far as how loud they were and how lively they were. I think they did really well for sure better than the Wrestlemania crowd but yeah man Ring of Honor I like I said I don't watch their TV but they don't miss on pay-per-views that's for sure so I really enjoyed Supercard was planning on making a video on it but that Dalton Castle match <laughs> made me not want to but um but yeah I'm glad that I at least came on here to review it at least <laughs> but um so yeah and then collision was was collision i i didn't even, i'm not gonna lie i didn't even watch most of it i i missed uh i missed some of it because it was so late oh man <laughs> but i saw the most important part which was obviously um the young bucks releasing the footage and i st man that's how this stream started man it was about the footage and i still can't believe that AEW is gonna do this like isn't it wild? Like, I'm in complete disbelief, bro. Like, I just don't know how it's going to go. But you know what? Someone made a good point that, you know, no matter what AEW does, they're going to get hate. Like, so might as well, might as well give them a reason to be mad. Give them a legit reason to be pissed. Because... For the past two years, I feel like they've been they've been trying to, you know, appease and and be play play nice at times. Obviously not not with everyone, but like they've with the media and stuff, like but now give give them a re give them a reason to be mad, bro. That's 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 the way I'm seeing it. Like at this point at this point just just do it. Like I'm, I'm on board with this. <laughs> Tony Khan's a madman. Anthony Agogo is back. Yeah, I saw that. So someone in the chat says they shouldn't do it. Why shouldn't they? I'm not. I'm not even. I don't even. I'm not even asking that. Like um in a challenging way i'm just curious to see your your viewpoint because literally why like i like i said what do what do they what do they even have to lose at this point punk cm punk messed up the whole perception of the company so if they have if they have video evidence of of punk you know frankly that that makes him look bad then then yeah why wouldn't they put it out and I say that as a as a hardcore CM Punk fan. Oh, they're one, they're one hundred percent gonna ask Kenny about it. But Kenny's gonna be very diplomatic about it. He's he. Kenny's very, very nice person. Wait, hold on. Shinku. Super chat. I woke up just now in AEW releasing footage of CM Punk. Is that true or bait? Also, AEW is making AEW talk about them in WrestleMania. <laughs> no, it's very much real, Shinku. Very much real. They're gonna show the footage, and and um, yeah, they they've just been nonstop talking about AEW during this WrestleMania week. 
like I said, guys, AEW has been getting nonstop hate for the past two years. Why? Why? At this point, why? Why would they even hold back? They're gonna get hate regardless. JD from New York wrote a whole thesis on on uh, how how mad he is that WWE's gonna or that AEW's gonna release the footage. That guy's a clown, bro. I'm sorry to all his viewers. I'm sorry if you're a viewer of his. And a viewer of mine, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is wrestling better with Triple H in charge or Vince? Um, If you're asking wrestling as a whole, I think they're about the same. Triple H is not this saint. He, he wants to globalize WWE too. And he would put anybody out of business if it meant it happening. But... He's messing with an NFL family here. You can't you can't take down an NFL family. Yeah, it's basically I don't know what'll happen. You know what I feel will happen though? When AEW drops the footage. I feel like even though even though it'll be in clear footage, I feel like punk stands will will like <laughs> will somehow come up with QAnon level conspiracies and say that uh, it's either one a deep fake, two the video is manipulated, three that uh that's not CM Punk, it's a lizard person that looks like CM Punk. Or uh, something like that. That's what uh, that's what uh, drones and and punk stands are gonna say. No matter how bad he's gonna look in that footage, it's they're never gonna admit that that punk did something wrong. <laughs> calling WWE wrestling equals calling Michael Bay Cinemas is Oz. Pretty much, dude. I do think, I mean, I think they're doing it for the, because of the, they're somehow going to relate it to the FTR. I totally forgot to mention that, yeah, FTR and, and Young Bucks 4 is confirmed for Dynasty. And I totally forgot to mention that, um, this is most likely going to tie in to to that. Yeah, man. Thanks to everyone watching. Damn, like I didn't expect so many people to be here. What? Appreciate y'all. We're just talking wrestling and gaming. Even if we don't always agree. Yo. Yo. Alright, give me a sec. I'm just trying to get through this. <laughs> Let me just collect the star and I'll get to you guys' questions. Alright, cool. Like Kuzu 94 says, no matter whose side you're on, Thursday is going to be a funny day on the Bird app. For real, dude, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bloodbath, man. Let's face it. <laughs> Let's face it. <laughs> it's gonna be wild. Um, I don't know what to expect, man. Out of that footage and out of the segment, out of you know the way they present it, that's the most uh, funny thing for me. Like, what are what are the young bucks gonna say? I I don't think they're gonna mention Punk by name, or I don't even think they're gonna show his face. I think they'll blur him out, but um. It'll be obvious that it's him, like I was saying earlier. Shinku says, the same punk fans that called him washed and old, the same punk fans that called him Lock Room. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a punk fan too, and I can see BS. Yeah, dude. Yep. When he was in AEW, they were 
they were calling him trash, but now that he's back in WWE, he's the GOAT. Funny world we live in. Young Bucks on a perfect run. Got to get the titles. Yeah. What do you guys think? How do you guys think they're going to do it? Like the whole footage thing. I think it's crazy that... <laughs> The fact that all the wrestling media, all the reporters are, are saying, no, they're 100% going to do this. I feel like they went directly to Tony Khan and Tony Khan said, yes, we're, yeah, we're showing it like, you know, to build anticipation. Like he's not, he's not uh, running from it. Man, I hate this world. Anybody who's played Mario 64, do you like this world? Wet, dry world? It is one of my least favorite. Well, I think it has to do with, with Punk uh, just uh, slandering the company, I guess, on, on Monday. Tony Khan is apparently mad, dude. I don't know. Yeah, Wet Dry World scared me as a kid too, man. Drew says Bucks will present it like true crime and <laughs> narrate. That'd be funny, man. This could be the best thing ever for, for Jack Perry, though. If he comes off like a total Chad in this. <laughs> and this is someone who has been a Jack Perry denier for some time now. I haven't really, you know, enjoyed his work. Um, his character work. I, I can't deny that he's uh, he's fantastic in the ring. But um, if if he uh, like I said, if he comes off like a total Chad in this video, it could be the best thing that's that's ever happened to him. Which is why I think when people ask what's the benefit, I think that's the 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 biggest benefit. If you really want to build up Jack Perry, SRS said Tony wasn't mad. Yeah, I did see that. So Meltzer and SRS have conflicting reports, which at this point, if, if I have to choose one, I'll take SRS's word for it. Mox should not be Naito, says Steven. Um, I agree. I, I have this feeling, though, that Mox is going to beat him. I don't know why. The scapegoat. <laughs> Okada saying nice job to Jack Perry after footage of him escaping the choke comes out. That'd be sick. Whatever it is, man, AEW must be confident in putting that footage out. SRS is now... Formerly a paid shill per his feed, <laughs> says Oz. <laughs> I think all these journalists have agendas. If we can even call them journalists. Yeah, man, what a crazy week. And it's the fact that Tony is doing this while WrestleMania is happening. Remember, the Dynamite after WrestleMania last year is when he debuted Jay White. I thought that was like a a huge flex. <laughs> no, no matter, despite what how they've booked him since, but like the fact that he debuted 
Jay White on the Dynamite after WrestleMania, I thought was was super funny. And the fact that he's doing this on the Dynamite after WrestleMania. Like, the Dynamite after WrestleMania is now becoming a huge event in and of itself. Shout out to the 300 people out here. Welcome to Shinku. Yeah. Thanks, Shinku. You're one of the OGs. It's crazy that we have that many people here. It's a sold out chat right now. <laughs> yeah, if um if Punk lied and, and Jack Perry um pieced them up, then how is Punk ever gonna <laughs> recover from that, bro? Drew I can't wait for Drew McIntyre to roast them. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Trank Mania. Bryce Pitts says, I'm new here, bro. Welcome, my friend. I usually do these late at night, which is why I understand that people can't join. But a man doing one on a Sunday, Sunday afternoon, kind of has me um, reconsidering things. I might have to do one every now and then. Just on an early Sunday afternoon. Am I getting concerned about QT Marshall yet? Brother, I was concerned the day it was announced he was back. I really hope these changes aren't up to him. Like, because I don't know, I feel like um, AW in the lead up to Revolution, freaking great. But right now, why are we seeing stuff like Jay White and Billy Gunn and... Oh, no! Just things like that. Um, I saw a... Uh, uh... Someone post about how supposedly, and I don't know if anyone can confirm this, that Sean Ross Sapp on one of his streams kind of alluded to to uh, Megan Bain. Because I know Tony Khan said that she's under some kind of AEW contract, which is weird to say. Like, like, like what does that mean? I know he said that this past um, Friday on the, on the media scrum. But... Um, that apparently Sean Ross Sapp's kind of alluded to her um, being loyal to, to Rossi. And therefore, like, you know, things with AEW being kind of weird because of that. Can anybody confirm that? That's what I read. That someone had said. Sunday afternoon stream instead of post collision. You know what? That might that might work, Drew. If more people can make it, then then yeah, I might I might consider that. Cause yeah, having two late night streams is is kind of like uh, redundant, right? I might have to wait until until Sunday instead of right after collision. But thanks, man, for the super chat. Thanks for all your support, Drew. You've been you've been here the whole time. Thanks to everyone being here, man. Like you guys are, you guys are awesome. Never thought I'd be able to stream and have people hanging out with me. <laughs> okay, so people are saying they can't really confirm what I said about Megan Bain, which I think is good news because obviously I would want her back in AEW sometime. My opinion on the Edge promo, I didn't think it was... It, my only criticism was that it was a little too long. That was it. 
other than that i didn't see the harm in it but now that now that they're airing the footage i really think there was there was like in the end there really wasn't a point to the promo because now they're just gonna directly retaliate to punk oh i forgot that red coin right there Jacob Fatu signed with WWE. Imagine he costs Cody. <laughs> Imagine he costs Cody, y'all. It's not going to happen because Cody already got pinned. But, like, I can't lie. The Cody fan in me obviously wants him to win. But the AEW fan in me wants to see Cody lose just because it would be super funny. <laughs> so... So I'm I'm stuck uh I'm stuck between those two mentalities. But now I think it's pretty safe to say that Cody's gonna win. There's absolutely no way, zero way. There's z literally zero percent chance they pin him two nights in a row. Zero chance. <laughs> yeah, I got the red coin. Thankfully, thanks. Museum standard. <laughs> the AEW show in me wants Cody to lose. <laughs> right? Like, it's just, it would be funny. Because the meltdown from WWE fans after Cody lost last year was super funny. It was one of the, it was one of the, the funniest nights in, in, personally, in my fandom of pro wrestling. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll get one of those nights uh, on, on Wednesday. It might be one of the funniest nights. Might be one of the worst. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Wait, where's the star? <laughs> Tony Khan in the chat. Tony. Please uh, book Jay White how I want him to be booked. Wait, where's the star, bro? All right, who knows where the star went for the red coins? I'll wait for someone in chat to, <laughs> if not, I'll just look it up. Nah, there's no way Cody loses. He he got pinned last night. That that solidified it. There's no way he loses tonight. Oh, it's by the pipe. Okay. Thank you. Ahoy, Princeton. I didn't even bother to check all the way at the end. <laughs> Bro, I played this game a million trillion times, and you, you would think I would remember, but I haven't played it in a while. That's why. Okay, yeah, there we go. Don't doubt the Fed, Trank. <laughs> I know, right? They can't be that dumb. I said that last year, but they still had Cody lose. How long does Cody keep the title? I think he's going to drop it to The Rock. I'm not even kidding. I think they're still going to do Rock versus Roman for the title. But um, Cody might drop the belt to The Rock at SummerSlam. And then I think at that point... Cody, Cody winning the belt is the moment itself. Um, obviously, that's finishing the story. He doesn't need a long reign. What I think is The Rock might win it. Maybe not at SummerSlam. He might be busy, right? But at another show, and then they'll do Rock versus Roman for the title. And then you'll, they're, they're going to put the belt back on Roman. He's going to hold it for another like 10 years. And then Cody's going to have to fight for the 
for the um the secondary world title Pat McAfee's a fool, bro. He's he's really annoying. I don't like that guy. Um, Ahoy Princeton. I think Bang Bang Gang is a is a sick name. I wouldn't mind if they just dropped the Bullet Club Gold branding altogether, especially because they haven't really interacted with with Bullet Club at all. So if they just dropped the Bullet Club name and stick as Bang Bang Gang, then yeah. Tony says, I think Roman retires after tonight. That'd be shocking. Like, shocking in the sense that, you know, nobody nobody would have, he wouldn't have hinted at it at all. But it, it wouldn't be shocking in the sense that if he's still dealing with, uh, with you know, like, like, well, he did say last night, you know, he still has to take, uh, like, oral chemo treatment, right? So if he were to, you know, announce someday in the near future that he was retiring, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked in that sense because that, that stuff is you don't play with 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 that kind of stuff, you know, like say what you will about Roman, but I I uh, I wouldn't blame him if he ever decided to retire young. Because, yeah. Nah, he's not retiring. I'm just someone in the chat brought up the possibility, but yeah, that's why. Like, yeah, on the human level, I I do uh I hope I I wish Roman Reigns nothing but the best, bro. WWE has Julia now. Billy, why are you yelling? <laughs> why are you yelling in the chat? I didn't expect this stream to be this big, y'all. Appreciate you guys. Any, um... Yeah, he's got... He's got kids, man. Like I said, I wish him the best, and I hope that, you know, I hope he, I hope he gets to do what he wants, uh, is, is just what I'll say. But yeah, guys, any, any, um, any last questions before I, um, head out? Are, are you guys going to watch WrestleMania tonight? Like I said, I, I, I won't be watching tonight. But I wish Cody the best. He's an AEW OG. I was there when he faced Kenny Omega at Supercard of Honor in New Orleans. Um, how long has it been now? Six years now? Yeah, it's been six years. And he told me he had seen my videos back then. I was only making like a edits, I guess you can call them. Wrestling edits. In the style of, of uh, movie trailers. <laughs> I asked. I asked. Um, are you guys watching Wrestlemania? And the chat just filled up with no's. <laughs> I thought at least some of you would. expectations for the young bucks segment that's a loaded question um expectations i think i think aw are confident in what they're gonna show so i expect i expect i expect punk stands aren't gonna be happy that's what i expect and i think it'll be a funny segment too knowing the young bucks Scout Danny, I think, is the first yes <laughs> Who's for uh, watching WrestleMania. 
do I think they should have pulled the trigger and let Yotetsuji beat Naito for the championship? Honestly, yeah, why not at this point? Kevin says, I just hope Bailey wins. True. Why does Tony think it's a good idea to air all in footage? This seems like a Russo type segment to get cheap views ratings. Um maybe it is. I mean, but WWE has been using their their media time this week to do nothing but but uh clown on AEW. So um they have the right to retaliate, even if it's on their show. Like I said, I probably wouldn't have do, done it on my TV show. I would have probably sold it to like TMZ, but Tony's going to do what he wants, man. And I'm just morbidly curious to see. Boots. Boots with the... <laughs> <laughs> with the very very generous super chat says decided not to get aw5 forever i ordered pizza for wrestlemania 40 later tonight honestly that's a good investment pizza you can't go wrong with pizza <laughs> but thank you boots man uh i hope you enjoy the show and um i hope cody finishes the story but yeah that's a uh, that's very uh you can never go wrong with pizza that's always my go-to too for a, like um for AEW pay-per-views, either pizza or wings. So, yeah. <laughs> Level up. Better than all in. What is this person talking about? Man, this... uh. This live has been phenomenal. But yeah, guys. Pro is yapping. Let's get rid of this troll. Okay. Troll is gone. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, guys, I appreciate you guys. I think I'm going to um, call it quits here, man. It was a really great stream. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. And um, you do not want to miss uh, <laughs> my post show on Wednesday um, to get all my thoughts. And we can all talk about it here. It's going to be crazy, man. Let's see how this footage goes. I'm, I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know what to expect. So, so. Yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. If you're watching WrestleMania, enjoy the show. If you're not, enjoy the rest of your day, man. Doing whatever it is that you're doing. Make the most of it. But regardless, appreciate you guys coming through. And, and yeah, man, take care. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Peace.